when I say, who's the master? You say, show ya. What's up, guys? Shown Off the King here, and I am here to bring you uh, my Manga Weekly Chapter Review. By now, you know this is my new way of doing things. I kind of uh, bring you both the Bleach Chapter Review along with the Naruto Review all in one juicy, juicy chapter. So it saves me a little bit of time, but it still gives you guys the ultimate you know review for both and you don't have to go find another site go find the other video when it's posted it's all neatly packaged for you in one little bow um so this week as you know uh, we're going to be talking about naruto chapter 637 uh this chapter was a lot of revelations some big things happened this week but uh enough of the enough of that let's just go ahead and jump into the meat of it so this chapter basically centers around the uh, ten tails and Obito and Madara. Uh, Madara, as you know, last week he started to perform the Rini Tensei in order to get Obito to give his life to resurrect Madara. Now, in turn, what, uh, what ends up happening is, and one thing I didn't notice from last week is, for some strange reason, when um, when Obito came back from his uh, temporal space world, I thought he landed in some you know, building or monastery far away from the battlefield, but, um, I don't know, I, I guess I don't know, based off of the animation it showed, it looked like he was inside of a structure, but in essence, he was actually, he actually teleported to the top of the Juby's head, and, and, and again, like I said, I, I completely thought he was far away, but apparently he was on top of the Juby's head, because that's where he started out, and the funny thing is, is I still didn't realize that that's where he was, until I believe it was the first Hokage to say, you know, stop the jutsu of the person on top of the Juby's head. And then that's when I realized, oh shit, it was Obito that was up there. So, who knew? Uh, essentially, uh, it looks like every it was, it was a situation where everybody was having an issue because the four Hokages were trying to still keep the barrier down so they were not able to get to Obito really quickly. And it looks like Madara was, you know, in the process of pretty much completing it. But what little did anyone know is that uh, they all started creating Kaji Bushin of Jutsu, basically shadow clones of the Naruto variety. And you, and, and again, I'm not going to say, oh, you realize that these other people can do it, because they can. But you can also tell that Naruto is still the master of that Jutsu, because he can create quadruple the amount of clones that still maintain the same kind of power. So it just goes to show you that Naruto's talent and his chakra is ridiculous. Um, another thing, uh, what a really big revelation, I'm going to just get to it. Um, the fourth Hokage, uh, Naruto's dad, um, we, real, we learned that uh, his tags, whenever he puts a tag on you, it never disappears. And it's evident in this chapter because it looks like uh, Naruto, Naruto's dad, he uh, instantly teleport. He creates a cog, he creates a shadow clone and that shadow clone basically teleports and basically I don't want to say bisect because bisect is a cross but uh, he you know horizontally just you know sliced up Obito and not even realizing who he was and then it, it, at that point is when you realize that uh, Minato doesn't know that that was Obito. He just sees it as the the masked man that you know basically killed his family so in seeing when uh, Obito after he gets sliced says he just basically says sensei and then just collapsed to the ground Minato has a flashback about the time when he fought the time with his encounters with the masked man and basically just realizes that oh shit I just killed Obito Obito's really alive it's kind of it's kind of hard for anybody to you know not realize that right away so I thought that was kind of crazy and again, but with Obito, one thing about this guy. All right, guys, this is this is my thing. I'm not gonna hold this against the chapter itself, but as you know, at the end of the chapter, we find out that Obito is not dead, and not only is he not dead, he is becoming the Ten Tails Jinjuriki. And there's a there's a a note at the bottom that says something along the lines of, "This was his plan from the beginning," and I don't know how I feel about that right now. Um, 
I think I speak for everybody when I say nobody was really excited to find out that Obito was a man behind the mask this entire time, strictly because it was the most worst kept secret ever. And I want to say worst kept secret because, again, we were all speculating, but the reason why people were speculating is because everyone automatically assumed the first thing that came out was that it was Obito. I mean, the way that they made it where the whole side of the person was always covered and, you know, they, they did little things like put Donzo in that kind of situation. So for a little bit, people thought it was Donzo. But I think the most logical explanation was that it was Obito. So when it actually ended up being Obito, it kind of threw people off and was like, the fuck? And then to find out that the reason, why, at first we thought the reason why he did it was because of Ren. And then we found out, oh, it's his moon's eye plan. He wants to put everybody in Genjutsu. And then now we find out that he wants to be the Ten Tails from Jerky. So again, I, I don't know exactly how I feel about this just yet. I have to. I, I kind of want to save my complaints until we see a little bit more. I'm not going to jump the gun, but uh, just know that uh, I, I'm not. I'm not too happy with him becoming a Ten Tails from Jerky. And I can. I can say it makes sense. I'm just not sure I'm enjoy it because let's think about it. Madara at this point is already OP. He's dead. He pretty much has an infinite amount of chakra and he has the Renengan and he's an Edo Tensei. So, I mean, on top of that for him to become the Jinjuriki on top of all of that, it's, it's ridiculous. So, Obito was the only one at that point that's been outshined because I think at this point, even with Obito's, you know, space-time ninjutsu, he couldn't be Naruto. He couldn't be Sasuke. Not with that, that. Not with that skill alone. So he was the only other person that needed that new power boost to make him stronger. And then it actually gives us a normal form person for the people to fight the Jinchuriki. Because quite frankly, that damn big beast. I'm so sick and tired of seeing it. It's been on the battlefield for like 40 chapters, and I'm tired of seeing it. I'm. I'm like. I don't care that it evolves into the final Ten Tails form. I'd rather see it inside of a person that can then fight as that person. And if he's a little bit bigger, if he has like tails coming out of his body, and if he does the same little transformations, I'm fine with that. At least it's a person that's the size of a person that's fighting the other the other people versus a giant thing that they have to fight. I, I can't stand it, but that's just my little gripe. Um, overall, I'm going to give this chapter a great. Uh, there, there weren't any other noticeable things in this chapter. This wasn't about Tsunande and everybody else getting to the battlefield. This is just basically about, you know, uh, Naruto's dad getting to the battlefield and taking out Obito. Now, there was, a, there was a quick thing with Sasuke where Sasuke was trying to get up to the thing. And it looks like Naruto, again, was basically trying to stop Sasuke. I don't know what that's all about. Um, him always just screaming Sasuke's name. I'm like, if, he, if, that's, what the, if that's what the first Wakage said to do... Why are you trying to stop him? Like, does Naruto notice his malice and he realizes the more he fights, the more evil he gets? I don't know, but it's, it's starting to piss me off. So, you know, Nar uh, Sasuke had his little moment where he slithered up the body and he, he jumped and shot an arrow. But Obito was able to deflect it with his chakra rod. So, again, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but other than that, again, nothing of note. Still no Killer B. I don't know where the hell he is. I still haven't seen Guy or, or Rock Lee do anything. And, uh, I think Sakura is healing people, so, oh well. Uh, now let's talk about Bleach. Uh, Bleach chapter 544. Um, this week's chapter actually can stayed with the Stern Ritters. I think we've, I think they're at the point right now where they want to introduce more Stern Ritters and they want to kind of build this story and build their, you know, their storylines just so that we can put faces to names when the, the battle actually starts. Um, and this chapter starts off with Uryu talking to um, Yuobok and basically Yuobok is saying to him, you know, him asking him, why did you make me your your successor? You know, it's going to bring discord in your group. And, you know, Yuobok basically says, good, that's exactly what I want. You know, I don't, I don't want them to just be able to accept it so easily. I'm not too sure what his goal is in doing that. But again, this is the kind of, you know, this is the kind of storyline where you get that stuff fleshed out in the next number of chapters versus getting all of it up front and immediate in the center. Um, also, with uh, Yuba, he basically tells Uryu that he is the last Quincy, and when he does, when he did his, and I'm guessing this was his resurrection when he 
and I want to say resurrection. Uh, this is when, yeah, this was his resurrection when he came was able to gain his powers back, and it killed all the Quincy's, and which included uh, Uryu's mother, which doesn't really make sense because up until this point, the only um, the only uh, Quincy's that we do know of are Uryu and Uryu's father, and we know that his dad has his Quincy abilities back. So, um, I'm, as far as I know, those are still the last two Quincy's. So apparently Uryu has this ability, since he survived that uh, situation, that he has this ability to surpass Uribach. We still don't know what that is and how that's going to be fleshed out. So it looks like, and again, like I said, I still don't think, and I'm going to say this every chapter when I talk about Bleach, I don't think for a second that Uryu is going to be working with the Stern Ritters. Again, I think he wants to learn more about them, learn their patterns, because that's the kind of person Uryu is. He's not a rushing a battle kind of person like Ichigo. He's kind of like an analytical person where he studies the enemy. He, he knew he was in a situation where he could benefit from, you know, infiltrating the, 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 the Star Knights and getting this power boost. And again, like I said, I just think with his mother being killed by Uobot, there's no way that unless they unless they do some sort of shit fuck move, there's no, there's no way that Udi will stay on that team. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, we also get um, introduced to new Stern Raiders again. I'll, I'll tell you about their ranking names, but again, I didn't memorize their names, and I'm not in the mood to look it up right now. Uh, because, again, they're just cannon fodder at this point. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Uh, we, we learned that uh, the Stern Raider that I be, believe beat Kamamoru, uh, she, uh, she had a habit of killing cute boys when she's frustrated, so she calls one of the Star Knights into her lair and basically kills him, splits him in half. And at first I thought she wanted to have sex with him. And I think that's the kind of innuendo that they wanted to put out there. And you even have this scene where she's like buttoning up her shirt. And you know, I think, it, and then, but you see the guy get sliced in half. So it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, and then that's when we get introduced to, I guess, her, her version. Like, I know you guys remember when we had the, uh, the visors and then we had the, uh, Iran cars in the last, in the last chapter or two chapters ago, and each one of them had their own fractione. It's kind of like that, like she has her own lieutenants. I think she may even be a lieutenant, but they all have their number ranking. Like, with the Star Knights, the Stern Ritters, their powers are based off of letters. So from A being the strongest down to Z, and they basically named off the girls that were in that group, and, and, and that was pretty much the gist of it with that. Um, we didn't even really get any huge revelations. We actually went back to uh, Uobot's first second in command, the one that snapped Ichigo's sword in half, and you know, again, he, it seems like he's a little bit more informed into what's going on. It looks like he goes back to his lair and he simply says something to the effect of, you know, there's no need to doubt, you know, Uobot Sama's uh, his his intentions. It is his will, you know, basically sucking up. And uh, again, like I said, it was. It was it, it wasn't it was kind of vague. It wasn't it wasn't like it was something that was concrete, and, and, and again that was pretty much the meat of the chapter in and of itself. Nothing really big happened that I could remember that's of any note. Um, but like I said, I'm going to give this chapter a good. I gave uh, I gave Naruto a great, not epic. And remember, you know that's kind of the, the highest you can go is epic. I'm gonna I'm gonna rate I'm gonna rate Bleach this chapter a good. Uh, namely based off of the fact that I do appreciate them trying to give us some character development for some of these Stern Ritters. They're not just going to make them faceless people that go out and fight. We kinda, we're kind of we kind of getting introduced to some of these people that are going to be on the battlefield, that are going to be fighting, but ultimately they're going to lose. I mean, well, the majority of them are going to lose. We don't, my in my opinion. It's good to see that we're, we're now developing Uryu's story and trying to figure out what's going on with him and uh, trying to realize how his power-up is going to happen and what's this secret with Iwabak and about him killing all the Quincy's. And uh, again, with Naruto, I'm going to give that a break because, again, it's, it, this chapter of Naruto is finally getting to the, the later half of this battle and we're starting to see some things movement. I'm still kind of funny on what I, how I feel about this whole Obito thing. Um, but again, let me know what you guys think. You know the drill. Comment in the section below. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it, and as, as well, go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm very close to getting up to my 500 subscribers, and I'll do a special video thanking everybody. This is Show Off the King, the one and only, and you guys have a fantastic day.